Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwenchet, where we talk about, well, this week at least, we talk about the new cards in the Way of the Witcher expansion. And we just done all the six factions, so what is left, you might be wondering, well, the 10 neutral cards that have been added. So uh, let's dive straight into those. So the interesting thing about the neutral cards that have been added is that they're all gold cards, and most of them actually have some sort of synergy with certain factions, which is what make these very, very interesting. They're almost, uh, all of them are witchers, uh, aside from a few mages and yeah, of course, Snowdrop, but we'll talk about these from the bottom to the top. So let's start with Maxi van Dekker. Um, six power and on deploy, you look at your deck in order from top to bottom and you may shuffle your deck and then put a card on the bottom of it. So basically, synergizing a bit with, um, well, with Nilfgaard basically, uh, providing you with a bit of uh, deck manipulation. It also indicates, it is indicated in the lore text there, she's a proud daughter of the Black Sun. Um, and she is also, I think, if I'm not mistaken, she's also a child of the, um, well, the Eclipse. So that, that's a name for that, kind of forgot about that. Laxiana and Falka, because we talked about that as well. Um, so yeah. Cursed, so magic doesn't doesn't really work on her. And she actually worked as a bounty hunter to kill very powerful sorcerers. So you can see that in the back. There's actually uh, an image of uh, Idaran and Alzur in the back. I don't know what the last one, I think it might be Cosimo. Um, but yeah, she's hunting down mages, um, which for Nilfgaard, obviously. So uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one because I... Yeah, I, I really want your help here. What's the point of this card? Because I don't see the synergies here. Um, you know what your cards are going to be, but if you shuffle your deck, you don't know what the order is going to be anymore. And then you put a card on the bottom of it, not on the top. So it basically allows you to put your lowest card on the, on the bottom, I suppose. But other than that, I don't see what you would use this card for. But let me know if you know what the combo for this would be. And then we get Berengar, of course, Berengar. Um, he's talking to the, the Voidanoid, I think that's supposed to be. Um, he's trying to protect the cow, apparently. Um, but at the end of your turn, destroy this card if it is the only Witcher on this row, which is, of course, a detrimental effect. But he has nine power to offset that. So a nine for six card that does destroy itself if there are no Witches left on this row. Pretty simple, but uh, yeah. Um, that's it, I suppose, just a point slimy nine points. Um, and then, a alchemy special card, Selective Mutation. Draw a card with adrenaline of your choice, so drawing it, putting it in your hand, then shuffle back a card from your hand to your deck. So you don't discard it, so there's no, no real synergy with something like Skellige here, but you also spawn a Witcher student on each allied row. So you get four points from that, and of course the fact that you manage to draw a card of your choice with Adrenaline. Most of the new cards have Adrenaline, especially the stronger ones, and then you shuffle back a card from your hand to your deck, so something that you don't need. Um, but I do love the card art. I mean, do you, you just see the creation of those cat eyes from the witchers um, just happening right in front of us because they're being injected right into the eyeballs. It looks very, very painful. So uh, let's just move on because that looks horrifying. Then we got Leo. Um, Leo is a witcher with four power, but on deploy, he boosts himself by one for every witcher you control. Probably going to be the most interesting in Northern Realms decks because we talked about that yesterday. We uh, have a lot of cards that spawn Witcher students and then of course uh, you can change those into Griffin School Adepts. Um, Griffin Witcher Adepts and you can boost Leo at the end by if your board is full filled with Witchers, Leo is going to boost up to what is that maximum? If you fill your board with witches, that would be 17 points on top of this one. So that's 21 points for a 7 provision card. Probably not going to get that high, but still very, very high for a 7 provision card. And then we have the companion to Alzur in the journey right now. So Snowdrop, uh, 2 power, but Zeal. Uh, and an order ability where you are allowed to draw two cards and then shuffle two cards back to your deck. And whenever you draw a card, you also boost yourself by two. So there's synergy with uh, Skellige here. There's synergy with Nilfgaard because, of course, you can use Morvron's leader ability to just draw three cards after this, boosting us by six again. Um, so very, very cool cards. And that's also the reason why she has eight provisions for something that seems like it shouldn't be. 
Um, it's not discarding, so it doesn't synergize too much with Skellige, but still drawing cards is something that Skellige uh, in a discard deck will do as well. So you still get the boosts on Snowdrop that way. And then one of my favorite effects in the new expansion. So Ideran of Olivo, I think uh, he's the creator of the Ider as well, because you can see it in the background. Starts at six power, but every time, every turn, well, every time in your turn, the first time you spawn a unit, you spawn a one power copy of that unit on this row and then give it doomed. This synergizes very well with monsters because uh, monsters are, uh, well, adept at spawning units. Um, it could also be used in Congregate, but it's a bit less useful there, I think, because you'll always be uh, spawning just, um, I would assume, the salads. But in monsters, you could use Karantir to spawn any of your golden cards and then spawn another one with Idaran, making it very, very powerful indeed. There's also a very funny combo that I've seen one of the partners actually do, is that if you have Idaran in your hand, you use the imposter ability from Nilfgaard and lock your opponent's Idaran and play basically two Idarans in the same turn. Um, you will use, well, those Idarans will start triggering each other. So you play Idaran first, you use Imposter to lock your opponent's Idaran and spawn, as you spawn with uh, the Imposter ability, you spawn the second Idaran, which causes the original Idaran to spawn another one, um, which is also spawned. So the second Idaran spawns another Idaran, and you basically uh, keep filling both rows and you will fill your uh, entire board in one go. Uh, but of course, it's very specific. You need an Idaran at the other side of the board. But it's it's really funny to see happen because you can fill the board in one go. Um, then next up, we have Cosimo Malaspina, one of the more uh, yeah creepy mages. And he actually has an ability that's similar to Alzur's. So he starts at 5 power, but on the ploy he transforms his adjacent units into random units that cost 1 provision more. So basically allowing you to transform uh, low power but high provision cards such as the Geralt cards, uh, Philippa, Blind Fury and stuff like that into cards that are way more powerful. Um, and even though he only has 5 power, this can ramp up really quickly because I think you can change uh, Philippa for example into uh, Spear Tip which is just an 11 point boost in one go. If, and you can do that again with another card right next to it. Um, so very powerful, but again, pretty random, um, similar to Alzu. And I think, yeah, that's gonna be the, the card that we're gonna end this on. Um, but the next one is a spell, a triangle within a triangle. You boost an ally by its provision cost or damage an enemy by its provision cost instead. So basically, um, it's kind of like Backer's Mirror, but instead of working on the boosts, you work on the provision cost. It's basically Vivian's effect, uh, where you also boost um, your ally with a provision cost, but here you have the, the option to either damage an enemy unit instead as well. Um, very cool card art as well. It's, it's obviously a mage battling a monster or trying to summon a monster. It's not really clear from that, but... Uh, yeah, I think it's probably trying to trying to summon it and then losing control of the monster. So triangle within a triangle. Um, but yeah, something that you can use. I don't see too much use for this because you'll have to have a high provision card. That well, you could always boost one of your own high provision cards. But other than that, it's if you want to damage a unit, there's not that many high provision cards that also have a high base power, so you will get the benefit from that. But of course, if you want to take out engine cards, this would still work. And then. Geralt Quen, so one of the final Witcher signs that we're still missing. Um, the only one, but there's a few that we're still missing as well. Heliotrope and Son were still missing. But Geralt Quen, two power, but basically a tutor for Witcher cards. So he has a shield, but on deploy he plays a Witcher card from your deck. So you can play any Witches from your deck with this card. And on Adrenaline Tree, so if you have four cards or less in your hand when you, ever, you play Geralt Quen, you also give that Witcher that you spawn another shield. So very powerful because most of the strong cards that have been added in the way of the Witcher expansion for the other factions are Witcher cards. So you can pull those out. They all have very powerful effects. Um, the only thing that I feel is a bit of a mistake here is that, or it might just be a balanced thing, uh, is that it's Adrenaline 3 while most of the Witcher cards actually trigger on Adrenaline 4 as well. So you basically try to trade one turn of those effects for the shield, 
which could be very useful. In the case of Arnagald, for example, for Skellige, that extra shield would allow him to take one hit uh, for his own ability, since he damages um, any unit that your opponent plays by his power, and he gets damaged by that unit's power. So if he has a shield, he can take the first hit, regardless of what power your opponent's unit has. So very strong in that, and it's good to just protect all the witches in general. And then, of course, the final card. We've already done a deck guide with this card. It was a bit a bit silly, but uh, Alzur, 6 power. We've even seen him in the Gwent Masters, which was really cool. Gravesh brought him in his uh, Keltullus deck. But uh, whenever you play a spell card, you spawn a random unit with the same provision cost on this row, and he can do that three times. So when used correctly, you have about an 80% chance, especially for um, on Aeromancy, I think it is, you have about a 80% chance that you get a very strong card, so 7 points or higher, uh, up to 12 even with Spare Tip again. You can also pull Reaches, of course, which is uh, yeah the worst option that you could get, but that's only 20%. Um, other than that, there's a, a lot of other spell cards that you can use with this card. Uh, it has its uses, but again, it's very random, so not something that you want to rely on too much, which is hard to do for an 11 provision card. But still, it is a very cool addition to get a bit of that crazy randomness from before Homecoming back into Gwent. And that's all the neutral cards in the way of the Witcher expansion. A bit of a mixed bag trying to pull from all the other factions and trying to synergize a bit with most of them. So especially Geralt Quen is something that will benefit a lot from the new Witcher cards that have been introduced. But what do you think about the new neutral cards introduced in the way of the Witcher expansion? Do you see some synergies that I might have missed? Um, let me know in the comment section down below and we can discuss this further because that's what we're here for after all. We're trying to help each other out. Um, and that's it for the card reviews. Seven days, seven days of card reviews, which was uh, really fun to do. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. If this is your first card review that you're watching, you can check all the other six factions right now as well, because we've done that over the past few, uh, well, the past few days, the past week. And uh, you can check that out and talk about those cards over there. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the card reviews. And uh, up next is going to be, of course, the regular edition of uh, Deck Guides in Gwentech. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope to see you in the next episode of Gwentech. Goodbye.